is Eternal Blade, and welcome to part 18 of the bathroom tutorial. Um, yeah, I made a mistake, actually. The dimensions in this aren't correct. Um, we have to remove this bottom piece right here. And because I was looking at it, and the top just didn't make sense. So I put in a few guidelines here just so we can follow them. So we're eventually just going to try to delete the uh, back pieces. So to uh, start off, let's hmm, select the large object, and then select the back polygons, and delete them. Actually, uh, just undo that and press grow, and then delete the rest of them. Um, then what you want to do is delete the other polygon remaining. And let's select the border of the remaining piece and cap it. Let me just pull that out. Cap. And then you're going to want to cap that as well. After that, you're going to want to go into see edge mode and select uh, these edges right here and connect them. Uh, one connection, bring the slide down to zero. Okay. Control hit verts and scale them down so they're equal. And after that, you're going to want to go into the left hand viewport and just drag them over so that they're equal to the other lines so that we can bridge them. Zoom in as close as you want and line them up just like that. Alright, F3, and then go back into perspective, polygons, select both polygons and bridge. Set the top one too there. Bridge. Alright. Um, I don't really like that line there, so let's delete that. Um, just try a backspace in this line, make sure you get the vertices as well. Alright. Um, polygon, select them again. And then bridge. And it looks pretty nice that time. Still have this one, but. And I don't think we really need it, so just click on it and then backspace. That fixes that problem. Alright. Um, next, let's move everything. So select the tub and the light and move them up. Just until they're touching the wall like we had them before. And then everything looks like it's in place. You can see that uh, the scale is pretty good now. And we can delete this other little box we have right here too. Mm, let's see what we want to do next. Mm, let's work on the hinge. So go in your front viewport, uh, Alt V viewport background, and navigate to the hinge picture. Just like that. Open, OK. And of course it didn't update because it never does the first time. So Alt V. Um, OK. Create a cylinder and just kind of match it up. And bring it out and then rotate it 90 degrees. Okay. Um, bring it down to match. 20 sides is probably pretty good. So convert it to an editable poly. Just like the bottom verts and drag them down so they're equal. Alright, and then select the interior lines, connect, and then so one, two, three, four. Give it four connections. Okay chamfer those connections ever so slightly just so that we can do the uh, extrude zone. Control click polygons then uh, press F2 to get the shaded polygons and then deselect the rather large ones in the center because we don't need those. And then, so let's go to perspective for a second extrude local normal bring it in a bit. This will give us the uh, imitation of hinges. <sighs> let's see like that, you want to go to the top and inset it a bit. Mm, not too much, but enough so it looks right. Extrude it a bit, and then bevel. Uh, make a cap-like shape. You can use a scaled-down cylinder too, or a scaled-down sphere if you like, but beveling works just fine for little details like this where no one really sees. Alright, um, next let's turn on um, the wireframe mode, and then go to the polygon, sub 
section and click all these polygons right here. Alright, um, let's see. Just extrude it out a bit and then extrude it a bit more. Okay, uh, looks pretty good. Next we're going to do is Maximize the viewport and click top and bottom polygons and then bridge them. Bridge and then select the next ones and do the same thing. Bridge. Go up and bridge. Where's bridge? Bridge. Uh -huh. Bridge. And lastly, these and bridge. All right. Now we have a pretty nice looking hinge. So I have to go find the dimensions of that. I'm just going to do that. Hmm. Alright, so uh, the dimensions of this are, it is, I think, uh, let's see here, 3.5 inches high. So, just scale that down a bit and move it over to the box. Scale it down a bit more. Align it again. And scale it up just a tad. Alright, you can delete the box now. Delete. And name it Hinge. After that, um, unhide all. Alright. Now, let's uh, line it up to the rest of the door here, just drag it up, and it's kind of weird, oh, oh, that was an orthographic. Alright, so align the hinge about where it should go, make a box, and make the box 7 inches long, because that's how high the hinge is from the bottom, 7 inches, just align it. And uh, actually, before we align the hinge, let's um, bring the door out so that it's equal, because right now it's kind of sunk inward. And uh, a little later on, we'll uh, adjust the height of the actual wall itself. So just select that, and then deselect things you don't need. And let's just bring the door in a bit. Looks pretty good. Try to align the hinge now. Uh, where's our box? There it is. Alright, so drag the box out so you can see it. Then go in your left hand viewport and press F3 to turn wireframe on so we can see the door. Line the hinge up so that it matches and drag it over a bit. Perspective F3. We don't want to drag the hinge into the corner, just so that it works pretty nicely. Alright, now we're going to want to rotate it a bit, so we can get the um, connector mechanism pointed in the right place. Alright, rotate that a bit more, and that looks pretty good. select the box and let's just copy that down to the bottom of the door so we can place the second hinge let's see let's shift drag and line it up and that should be pretty good drag the hinge down too and approximately line that up and F3 left hand view just drag it down just a bit you can delete that bottom box now.